Hi, everybody. Welcome to this presentation called Beginner to Certified. It's all about uh, my journey of what I went through with Magento development and how I became a certified developer. Um, first, a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Mark Schust. I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, I am married, have twin seven-year-old girls, uh, and I am a Magento teacher at M Academy, a company I founded. Uh, I am completely self-taught. I don't have any college degree, but I do have some certs. I am Adobe, Adobe certified uh, developer and business practitioner, and I also have other certs for Zen Framework and Magento One. Uh, so yeah, I started off as a PHP programmer in sort of a chop shop. I didn't know anything. Um, and another coworker showed me something new at the time that was called Zen Framework. He said, this is going to be the next big thing. Uh, I didn't know uh, Magento or frameworks or anything. And um, I thought when he showed me that Magento directory structure, I thought he was crazy. Are you stupid or something, right? And anyone new is to Magento is just overwhelmed with the entire directory structure and all the folders and files and like, why is this in place? Uh, they think it's pretty stupid and overbuilt and unnecessary. Some probably still think that, but uh, there are definitely architectures, you know, I thought I knew better and I thought I was smarter than this framework. Um, fast forward a few years and this is what I thought of Magento. My opinion sort of completely flipped around. I hope you get this reference. It's Magneto. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I sort of fell in love with Magento. I learned everything there is about it. And I got certified. I started creating modules. And things were really great. And then Magento 2 came out. And this is how I felt. I'm not a smart man. Um, I developed Docker Magento, which is the most popular development environment for Magento 2. Um, I tried to dive into it and I tried everything I can, but it was just impossible. It was so hard for me to wrap my head around. Um, the documentation was great, but I just didn't get it. So there was too much terminology. There was too many design patterns. I just felt stupid. Um, and I left and I actually worked with Laravel framework for a year. Uh, and after a year though, I sort of missed e-commerce. I've been doing e-commerce programming for so long. And for some reason I sort of missed Magento, even though I couldn't understand it. Um, I couldn't really explain it, but it felt like I had unfinished business with the platform. So I decided to finally learn Magento and I did this by letting Magento kill me. Uh, I posted this on Twitter a while back. Said Magento is doing a good job at this. It was a meme that says, find what you love and let it kill you. I thought it was really funny. And I actually wound up making a blog post all about this. It's sort of about hitting a resistance and picking one thing and going all in on it, even though it could be really difficult. Uh, there's a great documentary called Jiro Dreams of Sushi. Highly recommend it if you haven't watched it. Uh, must for any really creator, but goes over like the specifics of what's involved to really ace and master something. Um, and yeah, there's a blog post over at markshoes.com. If you can find it, it's called titled Let Magento Kill You. It's very, uh, very uh, thought provoking. So to really get started with this presentation, what certification should you go for first? There is the Adobe Certified Professional, Adobe Commerce Developer, which used to be called the Associate Developer Cert. Uh, this is typically what I'd recommend. I actually did the Business Practitioner Test first, and it was actually really difficult. It was harder than the Dev Cert. I think this um, Commerce Developer Cert is really the way to go. It is very hard, but it's probably the easiest of the hard tests to get through. Uh, so I recommend everyone to start with this test. Um, you pretty much have three steps to pass. There are all encompassing for whatever you need to do to get the, to pass these exams. Um, first, you really need to understand the architecture. You need to know uh, what everything's called, 
why it's called that, and kind of really understand how they work the way they do. Uh, you also need to prep for the test. Um, you don't want to focus just on this item, though. A lot of people just focus on prepping for the test, and they either don't understand the architecture, or if they do understand the architecture, they don't know how to uh, have like test-taking strategies to really help you improve on the exam once you know the material. Uh, so if you just focus on the second item, you'll most likely get pretty lost and confused. Um, or you just may know the material, but may not understand the intangible aspects of passing the test. Um, step one for it, uh, to getting your cert is to understand the architecture. Um, just need to take a step back and really learn the absolute fundamentals. Um, this is the most complex e-commerce framework. And if you try to jump ahead and learn more complex tasks without knowing the core basic fundamentals, you won't get very far. Um, so my favorite interview question is what is dependency injection? Can you answer this? Um, so many people want to get certified and they can't answer this question. Um, and it's just kind of a, I call it a brown paper bag question. You want to answer your way out of a brown paper bag. Like this is a very basic question, especially for PHP developers that are more up to date and common design patterns. Uh, and um, you really should know how this works. So before we continue, let's talk really quickly about what dependency injection is. It's actually really simple. Um, so normally when you create a class in PHP, um, you use the new keyword, right? To create an object exactly where you want to use it, you create that new keyword. Um, so what dependency injection is, is instead of just instantiating that object directly yourself, you're just passing it to another class, which then instantiates it and passes it back. That's all there is to dependency injection, really at the root core of things. Um, so, yeah, object manager is the name of this class that creates and instantiates these objects for you. And in the dependency injection pattern, uh, this is called the dependency injection container class. And that's all object manager is. It creates these classes and passes it back to you. Um, so why would you use dependency injection? That's another interview question I've asked. Uh, it mainly just decouples dependencies and it makes things easier to unit test and uh, really debug through your code. And it doesn't create a lot of dependencies on everything. Um, one class can con also control how objects are created. So if you wanted to do something to every object that's created in your entire application, you can because this dependency injection container can add some magic to these classes. And that's sort of what Magento does with Object Manager. So this is sort of uh, what I'm talking about with um, understanding the architecture. You need to really understand what's behind the curtain. Um, not just dependency injection, but really everything else. Um, it's still like this for me when I'm learning something new. If I don't I, if I don't really understand how it works, I just won't get it. I won't really learn it. Um, so you really have to just dive in and learn these core fundamentals to really truly understand the topics. And yeah, here's Magento and all of these names and it, it's just so much to take in, right? All this terminology. You need to just take a really a big deep breath and focus on one Thing at a time and it's hard because some of these depend on other items which makes it so difficult to learn and teach um, so you just have to kind of slow down and not get overwhelmed with this terminology um, just focus on one thing at a time and try to get that one thing really well then move on to the next one so how do you learn this really complex framework right well there's a few different ways depending on if you wanted to uh, learn free or pay or whatnot. So the first 
uh, resource I always recommend is the dev docs. So we've always wished we had this in Magento 1. Documentation didn't exist at all. So when Magento 2 launched, they were sure to fix this issue by creating the dev docs. And um, it sure, it has typos and bugs in it, but it's overall really fantastic. I love the dev docs. I use it myself to research things all the time, and it's just fantastic. Um, and there's tons of documentation and added and updated every day. So I highly recommend looking through the dev docs. It has a wealth of information in it. The core code, right? You don't even really need to go outside of your core base install of Magento. Just like um, Magento 1, you will start to see some certain patterns uh, emerge and understand why things work the way they do. Uh, well, at least 80% of the way they work, work the way they do. Um, I teach it and I still don't understand certain items just because there's so much going on. And um, it's not something you really should worry about. Also, you don't need to know absolutely everything in the code base. You just need to be productive on implementing features and topics that you really want to um, build. So, yeah, the core code is fantastic and highly recommend just diving deep, setting xDebug on some breakpoints and checking it all out. And there's also paid resources. Um, so I'm a teacher at M Academy. This is my own site. I definitely highly recommend it uh, to anyone that's new to Magento or really just wants to brush up on all of their core fundamentals. It totally speeds up the time to get items uh, and get topics and have things click. I've done tremendous research in the dev docs and core code and laying it out in a way where you don't have to look through a hundred different classes to figure out how to do something. Um, so I have courses on Magento coding kickstart, JavaScript fundamentals, and things like that. And there is a continued ed plan with the university. So um, yeah, it really just has everything you need to know to become a productive programmer in Magento too. So I highly recommend uh, M Academy. So next, you need real world experience with Magento. Um, if you know something, you really should be able to prove it. And that's kind of what the certification is about. So if you don't understand real world implementations and how to actually like build a real module, um, you won't get very far. You definitely need this before you attempt any exam. Uh, many try to bypass this step. You really can't. Um, there are certain questions on the test that you won't get unless you have truly working knowledge of Magento. Um, so a great way to do this is to just find an open source module or a concept in something in the marketplace and try to rebuild it yourself or try to rebuild a certain uh, just specific function or functionality of that module. Um, it'll really refine your knowledge and brush you up to speed on everything that you need to know. Step two, after you understand this architecture, you really need some sort of process to pass these exams. Um, the skill level on these exams is extremely difficult. These are really hard tests. Um, I've taken a few cert tests in the past. Um, Magento 1 was maybe even tougher, uh, but Magento 2 is no joke. Uh, so you definitely need to prep for it. Um, so here are my scores from both of the exams that I've taken. I've actually scored pretty much an 87% on both tests. Um, this wasn't by accident. I didn't want to take these tests multiple times. It costs money and it takes time. And um, this is just an extremely good score. You need a 68% needed to pass. Um, I'm not bragging, but I really just wanted to show you that if I can do it, you can do it. I was really confused about Magento 2, so much so that I left and came back. I was so overwhelmed. And I am an extremely slow learner, really. Uh, but I was still able to pass it with an extremely high score. Um, so how did I do it? Well, first, you really need to know your fundamentals really well. Um, and why do you think you can get certified if you really don't understand the core fundamentals? Uh, that's kind of the whole reason for the test. Um, you also need working experience with Magento 2. Um, 
the cert prep, even and even experienced devs can fail if they haven't properly prepped for the cert. Uh, questions are phrased and worded in certain ways, uh, and we'll go over that in a second. But um, yeah, you really need, also need to prep for the cert really well. You should set conditions. So once you decide to get certified, you really want to go all in and make it your primary focus. Um, you want to set a date and kind of work right towards that date. Um, maybe one month is a good time frame. So you, let's say I wanted to get certified. I decide today that I'm going all in. I'm going to set something like to take it for a month from now. And I'm just going to really stick with that date. Um, you also want to establish some, um, a commitment to making sure you really take that test in time. So set a, a specific goal, um, that you want to take and take it. And the first step in cert prep, I would always tell everybody is Swift Otters practice tests. Uh, you get something like four tests for 25 bucks, really cheap. And it really gives you a feel for what the actual exam feels like and works. You want to take it at the start of your Magento cert journey. After you brushed up on those fundamentals and gained some working knowledge of all of the concepts. Um, and what this practice test does is set a baseline assessment, which you can then work from. So it tells you how you are doing at this moment in time. And it really lets you know what to focus on. So here's my result from the first Swift Otter test that I took for the associate dev cert. Again, this is after I took the business practitioner test again. I always go into a practice test thinking I'm going to ace everything. I just know everything and it's the complete opposite, right? You take it and you're just kind of upset, but it's important not to be too disconcerted with the score. I have multiple certs and I teach Magento and I'm sure I do bad on a new practice test even today. Um, so you'll find out how much you really don't know. And that's a good thing. That's the whole point of this test. And it really tells you what to focus on. And um, so you can see these different objectives uh, of the Magento cert test. You can find out exactly what percentage you score on and um, what you did good and bad. Uh, and so you will also know which specific questions you got wrong when you take these practice, practice exams, which could be really helpful when reviewing. Um, so here's a test question from, I believe, a Magento um, test exam question that they gave out. Um, this is actually from uh, Twitter uh, a couple weeks ago. Someone posted this, and uh, it is a really good question to understand how these questions are asked on the exam. So let's break this down. Suppose you have raw SQLs in an upgrade schema file. Which command would you use to convert them to DB schema files? And you have some options here. Uh, bin Magento setup install, setup upgrade, setup DB declaration, generate patch, and then none. Um, so what you have to do when you get a question like this is deduce and eliminate first. You want to eliminate the obviously wrong answers that can't possibly fit into this question. So if you look at this, this uh, answer number one, bin Magento setup install. If you uh, have working knowledge of Magento, you will pretty much know that this command is used when you install Magento for the first time. It's not used for any upgrade or update scripts. So we can eliminate that one right away. And if we look at number three, set up DB declaration generate patch, that's for generating patch files. And if you look at the question, it's talking about upgrade schema and DB schema files. So we can eliminate that one as well. So that leaves two and four. Um, so most people who get this answer wrong will answer number two. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the answer, of course, is available tool doesn't convert raw SQLs. And we can reread this question and look for specific keywords. 
uh, is anything that stands out. So when we reread this, raw sequels stands out to me right away. That's a weird um, raw sequel. It's not just sequels. Um, and then let's look at the answers that are possible. And we also see it reiterated again in answer four. Available tool doesn't convert raw sequels. So we have to check the verbiage of these answers and see how they relate to the question. Uh, this doesn't mean it's the answer, by the way, uh, but the question to ask yourself is, can it be proven wrong? Um, so and another question you should ask yourself is, does setup upgrade automatically convert raw SQL statements to DB schema XML files? And it's probably something you should know if you have working M2 experience, and the answer is very obvious. Um, now it's important to know that there is no golden ticket or silver bullet in answering these questions. Some of them will be very difficult and different than this. Uh, some questions will be similar, but not exactly like these practice test questions. But it's a, these practice tests are great to get familiar with the concepts. Richard, Richard Feynman is a very popular astrophysicist, and here's an import, uh, important quote that he made. Understand, don't memorize, learn principles, not formulas. And I believe this directly relates to Magento certs. It's so important to understand the underlying concepts rather than focusing on specific answers for these tests. I've heard from people who purchased brain dumps, which are supposed to have the actual questions and answers on the test, and they've actually failed miserably. Um, so you don't want, definitely don't want to do that. Um, they are t designed to be extremely difficult, these tests. And that's what make, makes earning these certs so much more respected. Like this is a very respected cert and it should be. So what do I think about study guides? I'm really not a fan. Um, they won't really help you much. Uh, maybe they're great to glance over specific topics um, to kind of grasp the larger concepts of what's going on. But otherwise, they really won't help you much. They're loaded and bloated with tons of information that'll just overwhelm you. And um, it's really just too much to take in. You really want to focus on the process and reasoning of these questions. Um, these study guides have very little focus on cert prep also. They're just trying to brain dump you all of this info on the test, and it's just going to overwhelm you. A few things here and there might stick out, but generally I just don't recommend them. Uh, rather than just brute strength answering them, you really want to focus on the process. So after all this is done, you prep for the cert. What you do is repeat the process go back and take another practice test from Swift.org and see how you do this time. Uh, you may get questions not in the first pool. There are multiple pools of questions, and this is a good thing. Um, so you can get a real variety of questions that may be answered. If you fail or do, do poor on these, don't worry, they're just practice. Uh, just take a step back and try to repeat the entire process. Stay committed, focus on the fundamentals. Let's say you're really ready to take this. You have a high passing percentage or confidence score in this test. Just schedule it already. Uh, it's very easy to put this off once you already know all of the info in the cert because of fear of the unknown or fear of failure. So just commit it and schedule this thing already. Uh, don't continue though until you're pretty darn sure you're going to pass it. You don't wanna repeat this process. Again, it's expensive and it takes time. Let's go over some test taking strategies. So if you know your fundamentals, you've studied for the test, the last step is really uh, prepping with strategies. So I don't have a college degree myself, uh, but I did go to a college prep high school and they taught me certain strategies to pass exams and they really helped tremendously. The first is to keep calm, right? This is a great meme. Uh, this came out right when Magento 2 
uh, came out and um, probably seen this all over the place. But don't get overwhelmed, right? You know this stuff. You have already proved it. You've taken the practice test. You've did well. Um, in the test center, you just need to keep calm and go down the list. Hey, if you're stuck or don't know something, just don't answer it. Um, at the end of the test, you can review questions that haven't been answered yet and just revisit them. Um, I don't know how many times I was just blocked and I took a little break. And after seeing this question a second time, uh, it just became unblocked to me and it started to make sense. Um, so definitely just take a break and try to come back to the question. If you kind of know something, that's what there is a star or flag on the test. Star it for a revisit later. Um, check out how it's phrased or the situation that's being asked. Again, these questions are very situation based. So look for what they are trying to test you on for a specific piece of knowledge. These questions are trying to get your knowledge of something. Uh, find out, try to find out what they're asking you and what they want you to know. And if you're really confused, just focus on the keywords they are asking you and the point they're trying to get across. Use the time. So they give you a lot of time to take these tests. Use all of it. You don't get any extra points for finishing early and no one will know how long you took on the test. I, really, I routinely use almost all of the time given to me. I am a slow test taker, but more importantly, I want to make sure I do my best on this test. I don't want to repeat this process. So I'll go through the entire test, all of the questions, probably three times. Um, seriously, check over everything until you're super confident in your answers. If you're frustrated or overwhelmed during the test, this happens to me uh, quite a bit. Um, take a break, go to the bathroom. So I don't know how the remote online tests work, but I always go to the testing center so I can be more focused and really take the test without distractions. Um, so you can actually leave the test taking center, which is a huge benefit, probably over remote taking. I don't think you can do that remote and you can go to the bathroom and just do some breathing exercises, calm down. Um, take five minutes, you know, you have plenty of time to pass this test. Two hours is a lot of time. Um, so taking a break and just clearing your mind can be much more beneficial than reading the answer over and over and over and just panicking. Um, so I get really nervous on tests. Um, and I think you could break even multiple times. I usually just take one solid break, uh, but break as much as you can. I wear earplugs also. There are a lot of sounds and distractions in the test taking center, and I'm very sensitive to sounds. Um, even the clicking or someone walking in and out of the room, I could get so distracted very easily. So wear earplugs and learn how to put them in. Put them all the way in your ear. You squeeze them, put them in, and hold them for 30 seconds. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to wear earplugs. So earplugs definitely help you focus on the test, and that's really the only thing that matters when you're in that test taking center. And if you really just really don't know the answer, um, pick a number or a letter that you start with before the test, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four. Let's say three. Um, every question you don't know should get this answer. Um, if you can't make an educated guess or think they're tricking you, pick your default answer. So I remember completely bombing out of a test in high school. And I used this strategy and I actually passed probably barely not good in history at all, but um, all of my guesses were C on anything I didn't know. And it was a majority of the test and it I passed. Yeah, it's a hack my math teacher taught me in high school and it actually works. So and it's also important to remember that you can still miss a lot of questions on this test and still pass. So after you review the test multiple times, you're sure, just submit it. Um, you'll know the results right away after, when you visit the test taking desk when you check out. 
it's stressful every single time uh, that walk over and waiting for your test score results. Um, so the first time I took this test, I was actually very confident I was going to pass. And I did very strongly, the business practitioner. The developer test, even though I recommend it earlier, I was very unconfident um, after I submitted the test. It's always stressful. Um, if you fail, look at the alert as silver linings. It's a learning experience. Um, you just went through a giant big learning process and now you've done this before, right? You know what to expect on the test. Uh, you know what to focus on probably, you know, where you struggled with things. Um, and you won't know what specific questions you got wrong, but you'll have a general reasoning of what you should focus on. You can retake this exam five times also, so it's not the end of the world if you fail once. And you also get a 20% discount on retakes. So there's some silver lining to failing. But there's only one thing that matters, pass or fail, right? It doesn't matter what you score. Um, pass, fail, it's no percentage. Uh, no one knows the results unless you tell them. I wanted to share my results before just to let you know how I did and how I was so confused and overwhelmed with things, but I still did very well. So it's important to have some level of confidence when you take this test. And after you pass, you did it. Congratulations. Share your badge everywhere on social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever you have. Um, you now have a duty to share and help your coworkers uh, pass the test. So if you found up, found any strategies that you learned while taking this test or you discovered anything along the way, spread the news. Let them know what may be difficult, what may come up, and it could really help them out on their own test. So share your own strategies with others. So be sure to follow me at m.academy, or you can follow me <clears throat> by searching for my name, Mark Schust, on both LinkedIn and Twitter. I post about Magento stuff all the time, and I love for us to connect. Thanks a lot for listening to my presentation. I hope it was really useful to you.